Hey, Scrappy peeps. This is Lisa Lisa from The Cherry on Top. I'm here with a bit of a process video, and I also wanted to show you how you can change up some templates, um, some digital templates. This particular one is from Kim Cameron Designs, and it's called Small Town USA. It comes with a, there's, there's also a kit that you can buy. I thought I will show them off. And I want to show you how you can change them up using the marquee tool. I want to show you a little bit of the kit here. We'll scroll through and I'll show you specifically the templates. If you're new to templates, you might need some ideas on how to play with them and change them up. There's one template. Lovely, very patriotic. There's the one I just had up and that we'll be playing with. So I'll put that up again. This is another one of the templates. Lots of stars and cutouts available. This paper is pretty cool. I'll throw that one up there quick. I thought that was pretty nifty. She's got lots of very good elements. I'm really digging this worn out made in the USA sign. There's tractors and trucks and of course stars. Her t-shirts are cool too. Check that out. That's pretty nifty. Here's another template from the pack. I really like this one too. I think I'll be playing with that one as well. And I put my pictures down here just because uh, I wanted to save a little bit of time there. Okay, so I'm going to jump to this template. As you may know, I don't live in the States anymore. I used to. <laughs> so I don't really have a lot of pictures available that would be, uh, you know, United States specifics. Of course, you could use this for absolutely any type of layout you might want to use. Let me show you how I'm going to change this one up quick before I even get working with it. Uh, I took a look and I saw that the stars are separate from the paper and I don't want those stars so I'm just going to left click and then you could use the delete button or you could right click and choose delete as well. Um, I also don't want these stars. I kind of, uh, I'm not crazy about how they take up the whole page. They really take up a lot. If I wanted to put a large picture there, it would be difficult. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to delete those. Okay, another thing that you might not be crazy about are the stripes. Or maybe you just want some of the stripes. And that's where I thought I might pop in and, and show you what you could do. And this way, if I'm not going to do a page from the USA or anything in regards to the USA, I could still easily, very easily use this page uh, here. You can see on the layers section are these stripes. I think it's, it's really great. The concept is really nifty, but once again, it's kind of cutting off a bit. I might want to keep this stripe, but maybe get rid of the red one. So I'm going to click over here with the left click for this marquee tool. See rectangular marquee tool? And we definitely want a rectangular. And then we'll go the whole width of the page here. But as you can see, well, uh, that's not really going to work so well. So you're going to go up to Select and Transform Selection, all with the left click. And then go to your corners and look at there. Now we can get just the angle we need and we can move it all around until we get it right where we want. I'm going to put it, because I think I might want this first stripe. I'm at least going to play with it and imagine like, okay, yeah, I want that first stripe still. And what you have to do is make sure that you're clicked on in your layer, the layer it is that you want to delete or adjust. Okay, I can't get it just perfect, but that's okay. We'll, we'll play with it a little bit later and we'll, we'll get it just perfect. Sometimes it's different when you work from corner to corner too. Okay, let's see. When you think you have it where you want it, it looks like it's a little bit on the way. I'm going to push it back a little. You click this green arrow. And then you go over to your layers and you get rid of the stuff. Here I get rid of this layer. I get rid of this layer. And it's just wherever the box is, right? Okay, and the red. See, the red's still showing a bit. I'm just going to use my arrow to nudge down. Now I'm just clicked on the red. So if I go over the white a little bit, it's okay. There we go. And then we can select and transform a little more. Maybe you just want to take the box and just slide it on down. See what I mean? See these little marching ants are your indication of where it's going to delete. So I'm going to go down a little further, especially for the red. I don't have to worry about uh, getting into it. But when I go to the box, it'll be different. Okay, I'm going to click the green arrow. I'm checking I'm on the red. So everything in the red will disappear now. Yay! 
Oh, it still really didn't disappear. If you look carefully, it's still in there. So we have to go a little bit on the white, but that's okay because we're clicked on the red. Okay, now see, we still have this white thing here. We'll hit escape so we get rid of those marching ants. And then we'll try again to get rid of this. See, I'm just going to click there. I need to click up here because that's the layer that I want to delete. And then we'll use the backspace. And all we have left is the shadow. We'll click on that layer. This is the shadow layer. And we'll backspace. And then that's gone. See? Voila. So I got rid of the stars. And I got rid of that stripe that I didn't want. That was what I wanted to show you. How you can easily adjust this template to fit your needs. Another thing you might want to delete are the stars up here. No biggie. You just click on them, left click, and then there you go. You can just do the backspace to get rid of them or right click and delete that layer. And this is the template that I really like what's left. You have a couple of choices you could do as well. You could put a large photo here if you wanted for the background. That's pretty nifty. Or you can put a paper there, which is what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to use a frame, and then I'm going to do it all up. So that was the lesson I wanted to show you. If you want to keep watching, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and scrap up this page using Kim Cameron's Small Tail USA. And I'll give you a couple tips as I go through. Sometimes I save the background paper for last. I'm not sure what I want to do. I didn't go through and see what each and every paper looks like. See, that's going back with the stars thing. But this one, I think I quite like. This one here looks pretty nifty. Ooh, I see another one with paper. That's really pretty. I quite like that. Ah. Okay. I think I want to put this over that. See, I just slid that up over here with my layers. I slid that up because I didn't want that in the background. And now I can pick another paper that I want to use there. I'm just going to leave that one for now. I'm not sure if that's what I'm going to use or not. Let me see what some other papers are here. I really like this wooden look. That looks really good. Maybe something a little more red. This is beautiful, this here. Let's see what other papers there are. Is that it? Here's some solids. This paper's so cool. I really like that, but I'm not going to use it for this one. Oh, I think I like this. I'm going to pull that in. And then you just got to make sure it's over whatever paper you want to clip. Right click, create a clipping mask. Oh, isn't that adorable? I really like that. That looks good. Okay. What I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to delete uh, all of this. Of course, you could clip in your own papers, whatever you want. See, she uh, merges all of her layers. I don't always merge all my layers. And I don't put my shadows uh, separately either. It could be quite advantageous, especially if you're using PNG formats. But I'm going to go ahead and, and just delete all of her elements <laughs> and put in my own. I have to admit, I do this most of the time. Often when I use somebody else's template, I just kind of use, you know, the basic, uh, you yeah, know, the basic template, the background and all, and, and maybe a couple photo spots. But for the most part, I do all my own stuff. I, I, I just uh, like to do that. And what I wanted to explain to you, I'm going to start clustering in the corners, just like she had it. Uh, just how Kim had it, I'm going to do the same. You know, I'm not even really thinking I like that shadow either. I'll probably put my own. See, this is the beauty of templates, you know. Sometimes they're there just to inspire you and get you started. And then you just go on in and you do what you want to do. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, start my page. What I wanted to show you was how to get started on a cluster and how to make it look pretty decent and balanced. Now, there's people out there that make a lot nicer clusters than myself, but I'm going to at least explain how I do it. It's a lot like gardening. I just had this idea as I was trying to mentally go through, okay, how uh, what did I want to do a little bit for this basis of this page? And I thought it is so much like gardening. You start high in the back like I did here. I picked this long and tall piece or element to go on my page. And then you go shorter and shorter and lower and lower as you go. I'm going to switch this horizontally. Left clicking. Always use the arrows when you're resizing. Oops, it went behind everything. I'm just going to left click and do bring to front and then just bring it back to front. You could go over here and move it too if you wanted. Ooh, that's really, really large. We'll make it a little smaller. Ooh, there's no pointy thing in the middle. Yes, there is a pointy thing in the middle. That's really high. OK, 
Okay, and we'll just gradually build our cluster. And I want to show you a couple of shortcuts too as we're going some faster ways to scrap. Right click, bring to front with the left click, use your arrows to turn and resize. Otherwise, you might um, distort your image. You don't want to do that. These lovely images. Okay, if you hear some noises in the background, be not concerned. Tis my children. They are home from school. What I thought I would really like to do on this page is um, add my own little picture. Ooh, you could either, yeah, that's kind of interesting. You could even put it behind the stripes if you wanted like that. Oh, you know what? I might just do that, at least for now. Okay, we're going to do that. I think I want to also, I'm going to put that eyeball over there just to get a better idea of what this is going to look like, because I might change that paper out. Obviously, there's not enough contrast between my frame here and that paper, so we'll just do that for now. Then I'm going to add some flowers, and I definitely wanted to add, what did I see? I saw a very cool tractor and truck, and honestly, I'm not sure which one it is I want to use. Uh, let's see, the green, I'm not going to use the green now because of this, all the green on my leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and go for the truck and probably the red because it looks like I'm already on a roll for using a lot of blue. So we'll go for the red. And once again, I want to change the direction. So I'm going to left click and horizontally change. And now I don't know if I want to put it before or if I want to put it behind my leaves. Let's take a look and play and see. You could do always one or the other. You don't have to do both. There we go. Let's see. Do we like it? Well, you don't really see the leaves so much anymore, so I don't know. Maybe we'll put it up a little bit there. We'll see. You could mess with the size a little bit. I liked it quite large, though. I thought that looked pretty good. I just don't know how well it's looking yet with that. Let me see if I put it behind that one on the bottom. That's eh, okay. Maybe we'll put it up a little bit higher. That's kind of nifty. You know, this is like a low squatty type of element. So an element that might look a little better. See, it's, it's low and squatty like my uh, leaves are low and squatty. And that's why it's really difficult to place it here right now. <laughs> So let's go ahead and let's go back to the kit and we're going to scroll, scroll through and let's see what's more short and, and plump. Definitely the flowers are. That's more of a contrasting size. I love these zipper flowers. How cool are they? And we're going to leave them a little on the large side. If we recall from the original template, all oh, those wonderful goodies that I deleted. <laughs> She had some rather large flowers as well, and we're going to do the same thing. That's another good thing about templates is they're there as a guide. They're showing you, hey, consider using large flowers here and small flowers there, and maybe you want to use a leaf here and put something big there and something small there. The templates are a guide. There are an indication. You can use them literally and do it exactly how they use it. You can even copy their shadows or as Kim has the shadows that uh, are provided right there in the template. You can use those exactly if you want by copying uh, that layer style. There we go. Let's see if that doesn't fit in a little bit better now. Hmm. I really don't think I dig it behind the thingy. Let's put it above it again. <laughs> but behind that, what are we thinking? What are we thinking? I'm thinking those leaves just are not working. So maybe we'll change the angle of them. And I saw she has some other greenery. We might have to just go for some other kinds of greenery. But that's what the whole process is about. Just like when you're scrapbooking traditionally. Well, I don't know about when you're scrapbooking traditionally. But when I'm scrapbooking traditionally, I certainly take my papers and my elements and move them all around and try to get it just right, right where I want it. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 I'm digging this now. <laughs> But you want different levels. See, we got this one up here, and then we got this one here, and we got this one. Everything is at a different level. Everything different. See, if I move this up and it's at the same level as the truck, well, yeah, that's just a little boring. Uh, so we want to just put everything all at different levels. Nothing should be at the same level. It gives your page a lot more interest 
and variety. All right, another thing that I really appreciate about a page is consistency. And the best way to be consistent is to use things multiple times. So I'm gonna go over here, click on the pieces that I want to copy, right click, duplicate those layers, okay? And then I'm gonna move them over here. And this way, you have consistency in your page using the same colors using the same elements will really really help give your page continuity sometimes pages can look so busy and you're just like gee what is making my page look so busy it's more than likely that you're not using enough repetition in your pages sometimes too many busy objects such as patterns, too many different patterns and not enough solids, perhaps too many different kinds of texture. All these things can make your page look very busy. Sometimes you might want it to look like that, but often you want a little bit more consistency in your pages. Okay, so we're gonna do something like this. Let's go down here and we want it to be a little bit different and we certainly need some red. We've got red down here. We need some red up there. There's all these beautiful flowers. I can hardly choose which one. Since my flowers are already quite dimensional, I'm gonna go for one that's a little more flat and then that brings a little bit of diversity and interest into my page. A touch of glam with that uh, particular button there in the middle. It's kind of nice. A little bit of a jewelry style there. If you don't, if you think that contrasts too much with the rawness of the zipper, then use the other flower. It's not a big deal. So we get it just where we want it. I like to cover up a little bit more of that background. Okay, and we'll duplicate that layer. And we'll put it in here. I always like to tweak my flowers just a little bit with their uh, positioning, so we don't have it all the same. That would really look kind of lame. I want to see what it looks like underneath that blue flower there. Oh, <laughs> you don't even see it anymore. Okay, so that really doesn't work. We'll put it above it. It's quite okay above it, that fine. Maybe off the side a little more. I'm still not digging that angle. And we'll slide it over to the side a little more. Maybe up a little more like this. Okay, I think I like that better. And I did mention how much I like that sign. I want to see if we can get it to look nice here up in the top. Oh, and there was a guitar I thought I saw too. Let me see, there's the guitar. I wanted to try that out. Ooh, let me see what this is. Some glittery splatter. Oh my, it's really tiny. <laughs> I usually love to work with splatter. It just is a lovely way to anchor, anchor the background. I love it, I love it. It just adds another extra layer that looks really good. So I'm gonna put that there and I'll probably copy that and paste that all over the place. Um, I wanted to find, there it is, made in the USA. I like it, I like it. Super cute. Because I was born in the USA, but I just don't live there anymore. <laughs> okay, made in the USA. Let's see, can we really see it nice? You can see it pretty well, eh? No, you can't see it made in the, hmm. Let's see, how do we want to do it? How do we want to make it? I really want you to be able to see what it says. I'd have to put it there. And this, of course, we'd have to make it a little smaller or move. We could always move it. We can play with it however we want. That's what's really nice. And that's one of the things I was just thinking. Because I was scrapbooking traditionally for oh, oh, over 20 years, I think, I was scrapbooking traditionally. And, you know, maybe six years now I'm doing this digital thing and I'm doing less and less and less <laughs> traditional scrapbooking because this digital it just it just fits all your needs but oh 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 i dig the guitar oh i really dig the way the guitar fits in there it's so cool i'm mega digging the guitar <laughs> i think i have to leave it i just wanted over that one leaf there at the bottom but what i was saying is when you're using digital scrapbooking you make the elements the size you want how many times was i traditional scrapping all into my page it was almost perfect but man that guitar just was a little too big or just was a little too small and that is why i'm so crazy about digital scrapbooking for one there's no mess 
I don't have to keep going out and buying all this glue and buying all these photo albums and buy, buy, buy this, that, that, and this, and that, and this. You just, uh, <laughs> you just buy one little electronic download that doesn't, you know, even take up any physical space whatsoever. It's just really convenient like that. Now, I still really like this made in the USA. I'm going to try to put it over here, and we'll see if, if we can get it to look there, because it's kind of fun. I don't know. I dig it. Ooh, look, 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 look. Oh, I think it's pretty good. I really do. I'm going to put it up a little bit, maybe so you can see a little more of the A. And then I'll put it a little bit, a little bit like that, so the truck is that little thingy is right in the middle. What are, you, what are we thinking? What are they thinking? I don't know, I'm not completely convinced. I would really like it tucked in like this. I like it tucked in so there's no space all around it. Let's see if I move this a little bigger. Maybe make my truck a little smaller. That's what it's all about, folks. Just tweaking, expanding, minimizing. That's how this whole digital scrapbooking thing works. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. And I thought another thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna duplicate this leaf here left click left click left click and then i want to bring it to the front bring it to the front with a left click i'm going to make it quite a bit smaller turn it a bit i can put it here one thing i might want to do is put it behind that blue flower well we could either move that behind or even easier would be left click right click bring it over and then it's duplicated i think i like that that's pretty good i'm digging it all right i did mention that i would Copy this again, but this type of what we call splatter, it doesn't really go with everything. If you're going to have a very busy background page, it'll probably just blend right in there and you might not even see it, but we'll see. I'm going to put it there for now. If it doesn't look, we'll delete it. Okay. All right. I'm liking the way this looks so far. I just still don't know if I want to keep this underneath or above yet. We'll see. We need to fill in this paper here, and I still need a background. I'm kind of thinking about a plain or solid background here because this is busy, this is busy, and perhaps my background is going to be busy too. I want to pick a color that's not that exact same color. And I want to definitely choose something that's a little bit dominant in my page, or maybe not so dominant, like this very dark blue. I only have it here and there, so it might look good to put it in this stripe. I'm definitely digging the texture. Right click and create the clipping mask with a left click. I like that denim look. That's pretty nifty. And you can also decide about this uh, white thing here, if you're going to... Uh, change the color or not. I almost find it essential because of this here. And I can't use the green. I'm going to have to probably go with that light blue because I've got this green. Hmm. Either the light blue or the green. Well, you know, this is the beauty. We'll just play with it and see. I think the red might be too much. I don't know. Let me try the red. Let's try the red. Red is definitely my second favorite color after purple. I love purple. Create your clipping mask. Hmm, not sure, kind of like it, but then you have this here with a windmill. Uh, you could either use the eyeball or you could delete it to uh, when you're playing to see. Oh, we're just going to put them all in there. We're going to see which one we like the best. Is this one? Oh, it clicked automatically. Oh, I think that's quite a difference already. And then the other one that I considered was the light blue. Like this. Hmm. I think I like the green the best. I'm going to get rid of the red. I'm going to get rid of the blue. And then we have to, of course, put that back on there. And we definitely will need some shadows. That will help give it some lift and bring it off the page a bit more. Okay. We need a photo still, but we can even save that for last if we're even going to bother. We certainly need a background. We could go with the same one here, or we could choose something different. We're going to scroll through and see what our options are. Like I said, I really like these wooden ones. Let me try this one. Let me see what it looks like. I slide it in. Oh, oh yes, I quite like that. My frame is way too busy, but I'm almost certain I saw another one. She gave us three. Oh, I was right. I forgot this fence. I really wanted the bench. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this fence in the right positioning. I thought it would look good with kind of like this farm scene I was trying to 
create here, maybe a little bit smaller. Oh yeah, it should be smaller because yeah, what fence is higher than a truck, right? <laughs> Let's see, we'll put it like that. Oh, it kind of even looks like it could be the seat of the truck. That's kind of cute. Maybe a little bit more further. And of course we can do a couple, you know, we could do that. Maybe we want to do that. Let's see, we can do a little bit more maybe like this. And then we right click, duplicate the layer with the left click. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we like it. And then we'll go over that. And then we'll do the same for that. Change it horizontally. Hmm. I don't think I like it stretched all the way over here. I'm going to delete that one. But this I like. Bring it over a little bit more. I like it. Right here. Maybe right here. Just put my get in position of that. Ooh, just perfect with my truck there. There we go. I think that's pretty good. We'll put it there. All right. Well, okay. I want to do shadows, but I'll wait until we have a frame yet. Here was the white frame that I saw. Let's see. <laughs> Let me show you something else you could do. If you're having problems getting the perfect frame. See, I don't like the size of this one. I thought the other size fit so much better. Let me show you what you can do. Here's the frame. Oh, you know what? We can do a couple things. Actually, now that I think of it, I'm going to go ahead and slide in a paper and it'll definitely be red because it's going to be a good contrast. There we go. My paper. I'm going to make sure it's behind the frame. Oh, perfect. And we'll just give it some matting and we'll see if that's not enough contrast for the frame and the, um, and the background paper. Otherwise, it's going to be too busy. Oh, see, I think that's quite okay. That is not bad at all. Okay, and I also am going to need a spot for my picture. So I'm just going to duplicate that layer, that background layer. And this is going to be the spot for my photo. Ching, ching. You can adjust to fit behind your frame there. I'll show you what I mean then. Let me just go ahead and, and, and plop in the picture that I have here so I can show you how that's done. Slide my picture. Oh, it's very small. See, it might really have an effect on my quality. We'll see. Oh, oh, how lucky. I'm even wearing a blue dress that matches lovely with the rest of this kit. <laughs> I love when my pictures have the same colors as the kit. And then you right click, oh, green arrow, right click, create the clipping mask. There we go. We'll just keep this picture for an example. That's me. Yes, that is me. In the big hair days of the 80s. Okay, ready to go to prom. I think that was even senior prom. You want to center that a little bit? Okay. All right, and that's how you would do that. I I think that's not too bad. Let's jump in and let me show you how to do some shadows. I have lovely shadows from Snickerdoodles. I really like her shadows. It's a nice selection. You're going to click on the effects button down there on the bottom and find the shadows. There they are. Look at all the shadows. Magnifique. Okay. Paper shadows. The first one is for paper number one. Now you could look at this frame as a paper or you could look at it as an element. You could look at it as an element and then it gives you a little more depth. And you could put it over here and that's more like paper number three. Now see my shadow's not showing up because I clicked on this like a ding dong arama instead of on the plate itself. You'll need to do that. So if you ever come into that situation, you'll know why that happened now. Okay. Just gonna shadow up. Don't be afraid to go in depth and, and go deep with these shadows. That's what makes your elements pop off of the page. It's really fun. Now, depending on the angle of your element, as you can see, you can hardly see any shadows here. It's because here you can see it's always this left side of the shadow that I'm getting. And that's fine until you have something way down deep, like I've got down here. But I'll show you how to, what you have to do to fix that. It's no problem. No problem at all. Very easy. I'm going to go through, and I just want to make sure I have everything shadowed the way I want it. And then we'll go back and do the tweaking of the shadows. See, you'll see this one's at the top because the hanging out at the left shadowing is perfect. 
absolute perfection. Let me go to the other side. It's another story. Now, some designers will offer you shadows for both sides, right and left. That's rather handy. Now, you see, everything has shadows now. And, oh, oh I just love the shadows. It makes a world of difference. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to left-click, edit layer style, and then this thing will pop up. And then just use your mouse and get that shadow right where you want it. See that shadow? I'm going to bring it down. Of course, it's way too far out. It's pretty much natural that everything that touches something will leave a shadow. And that's the way you need to look at it when you're working with digital shadows as well. If it's touching something, it should have a little bit of a shadow or a lot of a shadow, depending on how far away that object is. Like this blue flower is quite high. It's quite far away. So I want my shadow to be considerably larger. I think the shadow is actually not bad at all here. Oh, don't forget to hit OK once you're satisfied with where your shadow is. This one's not too bad, but we'll go ahead. It's just a little bit low. Like the, just the points, I just can't see the points. Lower, lower. And of course, you can adjust over here too. If it's not dark enough, you can make it darker. You can even change the color. This is gray. You can even change it to black or whatever color you want. And then this is the size of the shadow. Look, I'll show you that leaf at the bottom. See, my shadow's getting bigger and bigger because this is quite far away too. I'm actually going to leave that a little bit larger, but it's good. I like it. I like it a lot. And then, okay. All right. There you go, folks. You have it. You saw how to take a template and get rid of the things that you don't want to use by using the marquee tool. I showed you how to use shadows and I gave you some tips on how to have nice balance in your clusters and how to play and adjust with shadows. Once again, this was Kim Cameron Designs Kit, Small Town USA, and I'm Lisa Lisa from the Cherry on Top. Thanks so much for watching. Happy scrapping!